Now, I did introduce you to because I wanted to, you know, lighten it a little bit after the pretty heavy week it's got to have been. Boy, it doesn't look like it's getting any heavier or any less heavy next week. But I, the one piece of sort of interesting news, and I put it on my Facebook, is that I, I'm a great believer and I've only become one. It's really interesting. I had one view when I was not a father, and then when I became a father, my views of a lot of things changed. And one of the things was that I think every child deserves a dog. Okay, so I'm a bit of that. I'm a bit of that one of those people. I just think that they are a heap of love and a stomach. It's a stomach attached to a love machine. <laughs> yes, and an asshole. That's right. The combination of the three. So it's sort of like a fluffy baby uh, for engendering that sort of reaction. But I think they're really important in teaching empathy. Well, the most recent uh, reviews just come out to show that the most popular dog in New Zealand for the umpteenth year in a row um, is the Labrador slash Golden Retriever. Although I don't understand what the difference is between the two of them. But joining us to talk about this is somebody who has bred them and has been um, a member of the Labrador Club is Pat Wollaston. He joins us now. Pat, good morning. Welcome to the show. Nice to have you on. Good morning, Michael. Oh, wait on. I've, I've just done it again. I'll have to do it again, so it's all right. Now, you can hear me, Pat. I can. Cool. Um, first of all, where do you come from? Oh, I live in Auckland. Oh, okay. I'm S South Islander originally. Yep. And how long have you had Labradors? Oh, gosh. Um, 50-something years. Okay. A long time. A long time. A long time. Yes, I'm ancient. Now, go back to getting your first one. Uh, have Labradors increased in terms of their popularity with New Zealand dog owners, or have they always were they popular as popular back then? I think they were the go-to dog. You know, they're so versatile. They're not too big. They're not too small. They're a lady's dog. They're a man's dog. They're kids' dog. And I just think they were just the dog, the default dog that people got. I don't know they, whether they chose a Labrador. It was just the dog that was around. Ah, so there wasn't um, a lot of choice when sort of 30 or 40 or 50 years ago. <laughs> no. Well, actually, I'm no, thinking, not really. No, not I'm, thinking really. Back. No, I'm actually terriers. thinking back. I think terriers. you're right. I think you're right, yeah. yeah. I'm remembering my yeah, childhood. There were terriers, yeah, there was people. There was the and, German and Shepherd. And there were, yes, yeah. There was the Labrador and, were, and there were little... Little bulldogs with their funny little noses, which the old pensioners used to have. <laughs> well, yes, and there were fox terriers. Fox terriers, lots that's terriers right. Fox terriers back yep. in the day. Yep. Yeah. And people didn't have anything fenced, and they just all sort of roamed around and, yeah. Well, that was, was the other big fun. difference. Go back 50 years to New Zealand, and everybody had a mm -hmm. backyard. Mm -hmm. um, yes. Today. And. Yeah, carry on. They don't have backyards. No. And also, both. Very often, both parents work. Work, another so thing. Yeah, yeah, that's another thing. Well, and that's what surprised me about the uh, the other thing that came out of the survey was that we are we now own more dogs per capita than we've ever done before. Um, why have dogs? Be and the argument was well, the supposition was that COVID had made people appreciate dogs more because I guess they were lonely and they wanted something to to have. D does that try strike you as being right? No, I, I, I don't think so. I think people are more aware. I mean, we didn't have gyms. People didn't get themselves all into lycra and go out and exercise because they were digging in their gardens. They walked to school. There weren't the number of cars. And I think now people are more conscious of the fact that they actually have to get out and a dog is a good reason to get out. Oh, I hadn't thought of that. So if... Because I'd always assumed that we had now moved to a default position that every child deserves a dog. But have I got that wrong? Oh no, I don't think you're wrong. I think parents do want do want their kids to have, well, to have a dog. Not all parents do, but they do think that oh, my child should have a dog, which I think is a wee bit of a mistake unless the parent really wants a dog as well, because it's a big responsibility for a child. And and kids say, oh, please, I want a puppy for Christmas, and that's that's fine too. But the parents do do really need to be the person that's looking after the dog, unless it's a fifteen or sixteen year old, and they can look after it by themselves. But I do think that it's um, parents need to 
need need to want to have a dog rather than just the child wanting a dog. But I just think people like getting out with their dogs now. We've got markets. People go and they take their dogs to the markets and everybody talks to you. You go down the road with the dog and people talk to you. You yeah, that's walk another thing. Yeah. By yourself, and they think you could be a wee bit dodgy. It's just funny you should say that because I had a, a friend of mine who was single, single male, and he's um, 30s, no, early 40s, and he used to say to me that a Labrador was a chick magnet. And I must admit, I oh, didn't yes. quite get that, but I take your point. Argument was <laughs> this dog was so friendly that, yeah, that people would stop and talk to him. Yes, and if you've got a dog, you must be a nice person. <laughs> Isn't that interesting? Like dog. No, I think you're right. No, I think you're. I think you're spot on. I think there is that perception that if you own a nice dog, you must be a nice person. Yes, and I think if you own a nice dog, then you probably are a nice. Yeah, person. I know what you mean. Well, certainly, parts of you are. Yeah. So, so dogs reflect their upbringing. That would be your contention. If you've got a benign, yes, laid-back yes. dog, you've got a benign, laid-back owner. Yeah, and and if you go if you. Labradors are socially acceptable. They're out at the airport as drug dogs. They're, people see them as guide dogs. You know, they don't expect to be bitten by a Labrador, so they're more inclined to come up to someone with a Labrador and say, can I pat your dog? Mm. You possibly wouldn't do that with some of the other breeds. No. Boy, well, I have to say, if, if, if people reflect the dogs they've got, I've got a Jack Russell, so that probably explains everything. <laughs> Oh, we're a brave man, you are. Oh, well, yeah, this is the third Jack <laughs> Russell. So clever. Uh, no, what? they're so clever, but they need, you know, 25 k's of exercise a day. And then so that was a nice warm-up. Yeah, no, they're, uh, uh, yeah, well, that's not just that. They've got a whole series of other personalities and idiosyncratic qu- uh, quirks. I, pe- <laughs> I think they're the, probably the only dog breed that I know that are bred, it's part of the breed that they've got ADHD. Don't you think? <laughs> I think you're quite possibly right. I think, yeah, no, but there's there's such characters though. You have to, yes, you have to tailor, make your life for a Jack Russell. I think. Yeah, no, nah, it's all right. Uh, but, but the, the un- un- interesting thing, and the thing that I guess the Jack Russell, and because they're very popular in Central Otago, I don't think I've never seen as many Jack Russells. If I, and that's the next question I was going to ask you. Rabbits. Well, I guess that's part of it, but then a lot of people don't let their dog out to chase rabbits because they get, tend to get bowled by cars and things like that. Yeah. But the, is there some sort of regional? Have you looked at New Zealand and thought there are some regions more than others that own particular dog breeds? I haven't actually looked at it, but I, I, I mean, I know the, the numbers of Labradors in... Auckland and in cities. I mean, the, people think of them as country dogs, but they adapt very well to a city um, as long as they're taken out for walks. I mean, a walk with the Labrador is great because they find food everywhere. Well, I know. That they can pick but, up. But and, are they, you know, are they and, simply a life support system, though, Pat? Do you think for a stomach, um, the lab? <laughs> Absolutely. Honestly, they can siphon food off a bench from six feet away. Yeah, and that's but but they are are they unique in that? I mean, I know all dogs. We we obviously we made the wolves, and we you know, you know know all the background, and they stuck around because there was easy food there. But the Labrador seems to have refined it to a fine degree. Is there any other dog like no, that, or is that just a common I, trait? I think they've all got no. I I think a lot of dogs are like that. The Labradors are just crafty, though. They get get better at it. They have got great noses, though. They really have, and it makes them. In a way, it makes them easier to train because you can bribe them with food. You know, a food as a reward is just wonderful. You can even give them air biscuits, you know. They, you give them five biscuits, they think that six one's a biscuit as well when you put your hand up. It's, no, they are. They are. <laughs> oh, we used to have guys like that at boarding school. Um, yeah. <laughs> Oddly enough, they probably had the personality of a Labrador now, I think about it. Um, what's the difference between a Labrador and a Golden Retriever, though? I, I, Oh, mm. they're bred to do the same job. They're bred to retrieve, to mark a bird when it falls and retrieve and bring it back. So they're much the same size. Golden Retriever's got a longer coat. Um, I think Labrador's a bit punchier. They're, 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 they're tougher. They're, um, Golden Retriever people will be, will be ready to lynch me for that. But they are, they are, uh, um, they're, yes, they're a wee bit 
wee, wee bit tougher than golden retrievers. Golden retrievers are very mellow, lovely dogs. They're gorgeous. Um, but they are bred to do the same job, which is to work with somebody. They have to be able to work off lead, and so they react to people. They come back to people. They pick up the game and instinctively bring it back. A little puppy, you know, five or six weeks old in the nest will pick things up and bring them to you. They just they just do that. And the golden retrievers do the same thing. Um, same size, similar temperament, probably not quite as foodie as a, as a Labrador and um, a little bit softer. 